How did you respond after your ex wanted you back after leaving? Story 1. My ex of almost three years wanted to take a break while I went to Spain for four months. I told him no. We're either staying together or breaking up. So we broke up. I was pissed more than anything. We've gone through two breakups before that lasted no more than a week or two before he came crawling back. I loved this kid. I did so much for him and worked so hard at our relationship. He loved me, I know, but he put no effort into it and treated me as an option most times. I ended up meeting someone before I left for Spain. The same week we broke up. We kept in touch. Four months later, I returned from Spain. The day after I got home, guess who texted me? My ex. Somehow he found out I returned, and it was clear he was slowly working his way back into my life. I'm no dummy. I started dating this other guy, and it was clear he liked me a lot. I was really starting to like him, too. I to the sky out with my ex a bunch, too, as friends. Nothing more, seriously. About a month or two go by after my return, and my ex had been going through some serious depression. He tried to terminate himself. He is a functioning alcohol, and eventually I think he was sick of who he was. Maybe this made him realize how important I was to him. Once he was sober for more than a day, doctor ordered he didn't drink for a few months after that. He basically told me what I always wanted to hear, that he never appreciated me and loved me and was so sorry for everything. I believe that he meant it, but I told him I was dating the other guy and that I wasn't interested in getting back together. I was so proud of myself for not getting back with him. I'm finally with someone I deserve, and he deserves me. He's so good to me. I was never mean to my ex, but I told him I wasn't interested in getting back together. I told him that one day our paths may cross again, who knows. After what I've heard about him since, I could never date him again. He's apparently gotten around to a disgusting extent. I wouldn't want to be with him anyway. Getting back together with an ex is almost always a bad idea, unless it's been a long, long time since the relationship happened. I mean, you've dated other people and have gotten over each other. It's really rare that relationships work out when exes get back together without a true healing process involved. I'm so happy I stayed strong and didn't get back together with him. Even though in my heart, I was so sad not to be back with him. I still miss him, but it's different now. Story 2. I've talked about this before. Every time I have had a breakup with an ex where I thought there may be lingering feelings or a chance that either her or I would try to get back together, I've written a letter to myself and sealed it. Whenever I got the urge to contact her or she tried to contact me, I would open and read the letter aloud, then reseal it. Oh, and I would complacency. Because making decisions with the guy downstairs instead of the much smarter guy upstairs avoids a lot of dumb cow. In the letter, I would reference all of the bad cow that caused us to break up, in detail using words I knew would make me upset or angry or sad. Making myself feel those feelings that I had at the time we broke up all over again hurt at the time but helped me avoid making a lot of stupid, stupid choices. Story 3. I was in love with this girl since I first met her, and we started dating a few months later. After a few awesome months, I finally to the sky out with her and her other friends one night. I knew they never liked me, but I was willing to try hanging and let bygones be bygones. They were all drinking and popping pills, but I wasn't as I had to drive home. Next morning, her friends accused me of stealing a bottle of vodka from them while they were on a drunken walk. They eventually got her on their side, I got yelled at a lot and had the riot act read to me for something I didn't do, and a few days later she broke up with me, to about two years later with absolutely no contact. I was bedridden and told not to walk for four months due to a really bad foot injury, eventually became depressed after only about three people, parents included, came to visit the first few months, and for a few days became to the sky. She had heard through a mutual friend, her ex-MY best friend, he actually introduced us, of what was happening and called me out of the blue one night during the worst period of self-hate and worthlessness during the whole ordeal asking if she could stop by to visit. At first I was hesitant, as I thought she still hated me, but eventually relented and said yes. She ended up spending the night. No close relationship, not even a kiss. We just laid down on my bed talking for hours. I eventually remembered why I loved her in the first place. We got back together a few weeks later, only to have her move to Ottawa for school four months later. We decided to keep the relationship going long distance, even though she moved in with the same piece of cow friends that helped us break up in the first place. After losing my job, but not before buying a car, some months later I followed suit and moved in with her, much to the absolute disdain of her roomies. After they found out we were planning on finding our own place, they blackmailed her to try to get her to stay so they could continue gouging and overcharging her for rent. We moved out the very next day after I found out and secured a new apartment the same day. Told them to fudge themselves and never looked back. 
Today we're going strong at five years together and have a beautiful daughter. Not every ex calling back story ends badly. Story four. Went to pick up my stuff from our apartment. When I arrived, there were candles everywhere, a dozen roses, and a beautiful dinner. He got down on one knee and asked me to forgive him. I said no and went upstairs to grab my stuff. He followed me, grabbing a photo frame and smashed it at the floor near my feet. He said he can't believe he just wasted all that money on me and I wouldn't even take him back. Sorry, dude. Flowers don't hide the fact you're a psycho. Story 5. Oh man, my ex went psycho. He went completely psycho. First was the arrogant, I'm so over you, I have an awesome new job with lots if money and I go out all the time talk. While I was still hurting from the breakup, but all I would say is, I'm so glad you are happy. I tried to be positive and supportive, because even though I was hurting, I knew I didn't want to be with him anymore. About a month later, I started seeing someone else, but didn't tell him. Then he got all apologetic and begging me to come back. I guess the party lifestyle wore off. He took me out for dinner for my birthday, because I spent an extravagant amount on his birthday, and I thought he legitimately wanted to make it up to me. And he went off on my for checking my phone on the table, saying I didn't respect him. Then he tried to kiss me, and he tried to force me to let him stay at my place. I almost fell for it, too. I was saying he could, but not sleep with me. Then he asked if I was okay with it, and I said, Not really, but if it's what you need, you don't have to go home. And he lost his cow saying I didn't care about him and I hurt him and then I sat in my car with him for four hours crying about how he hates me. He asked if we ever had a chance again and I said no. I said I was done and we weren't good for each other and I had already moved on. Then he went crazy. He talked about how lonely he was and offered me money for close relationship, which I promptly turned down and got offended at, but he did it three times. Then he sent me this long email telling me all of my shortcomings, how worthless I was, how he hated every moment of our four-wire relationship blah blah then he started threatening my job my life saying he was going to steal my dog saying he was going to tell my family all of these horrible things to ruin our relationship it was already rocky i finally had enough and i didn't know where else to go besides telling my parents and then they helped me get the police involved and yay restraining order i haven't heard a word from him since and my life has improved 100 fold since then story six i'm so late to this party but here it goes during the going-away party of a mutual friend, which I attended with my new girlfriend, the ex asks me to talk alone. We go to the bar away from our friends in the patio, and she tells me she misses me, that she still loves me, and she made a huge mistake breaking up with me that drunken night. I tell her that it's flattering she thinks so, but that I don't care about her anymore and she should move on. Then I laughed and mentioned how that was a very awkward thing to bring up with my new girlfriend not 20 feet away. X sits down at a table to quietly cry the rest of the night, making it a very uncomfortable going away party. I gave no. Sure, Reddit will be very mad at me, but it felt great. Story 7. Had been together seven years school. We were happy and best friends. But L broke up because I hadn't ever been with anyone else. She wanted to get engaged. And I was afraid because L used to take a lot of stick for having one vagina syndrome from my friends. I didn't have anyone else, became lonely, got depressed, lost my job, medication didn't work, tried to take my own life. She got sick, had six months off work with anxiety attacks. Been three years. I still haven't been able to face a relationship. She ended up with her boss from work. I still see the Facebook updates. I passed away back then. I just keep going because my cat needs me to feed it. Turns out all those friends were actually jealous of what I already had. Feels bad, man. Story 8. I let her take me to dinner. She said she didn't like her new boyfriend and told me all the ways he sucked. Didn't like the same music. Hated her friends. Was a real peach at inconvenient times, etc. I told her that all the things he is doing to her. She did to me. I know it was petty, but I made sure she knew that she gave up a house. Someone that loved her. Someone that could provide for her. I made two three X what he made all because she thought the grass may have been greener on the other side. Then I told her about how my new girl had shown me that I didn't need to always worry about how I was going to screw up. I let her know that I had learned that a relationship doesn't have to be a constant struggle, and that it was possible to be happy without much effort. I told her I was better now that she was gone, and that I would under no circumstance come back. Story 9. We broke up while I was attending the police academy to be a park ranger. I had written a letter to her asking for us to go for a second to which she said no and wasn't going to have it. So I moved on from it, focused on my upcoming academy weeks. Few weeks later, after I graduated from the academy, I returned to the old apartment to get my remaining stuff. I remained calm and collected, got my stuff and loaded the car. On the way out, she went crazy postal that I wouldn't even give us a second or work things out. I assumed the police interview stance, 
got calm and collected and just listened to her, which only made her go more postal, screaming at the top of her lungs and almost kicking the railing out of the porch. I left and laughed the entire ride home. Gotta give my drill sergeant credit. The million push-ups and complete hell he put me through got me over the breakup quick, and the training of dealing with crazy people paid off wonders. Story 10. The first girl I fell in love with dumped me the day she left for university. We were both young, so in hindsight, I can see why she wouldn't want to be with me despite consistently reassuring each other we would do the whole long-distance thing. I was devastated. It took me months before I started to see other people. The time passed and she began to get depressed, or claimed to be, while she was away and would look to me for support. I gave her minimal because it hurt me too much, because of how blindly in love I used to be with her. I met this gorgeous girl at a party, at one of the universities my friend was going to. She was stunning and we hit it off really well, ended up going on a couple dates and talking constantly. My ex ended up coming home permanently because she didn't like where she was, and long story short, we got back together and I had to break it off with the girl I had been seeing. It was the biggest mistake I've ever made. The following year was awful with her. She was absolutely manipulative, a liar, and took advantage of me. My judgment was clouded, and I suffered greatly because of it. Found out she was sleeping with loads of people when she was away, got double teamed, etc., lied about all of it. I ended things with her, and over the next year and a bit I tried to patch things up with the girl I was seeing before, but it was no use. She was with someone already. I apologized profusely. She admitted to really liking me and was extremely hurt when I blew her off. We would talk here and there and I couldn't get her off of my mind. This will probably be buried. I've written more than I've intended, but I'm now with that girl. The timing was never right. She ended up studying abroad and we did long distance together after patching it up. She's back now and we've been together almost seven months. I couldn't be happier. She is the most trustworthy, gorgeous, and genuine girl I've ever met. I can finally admit that I'm in love again, and it's mind-blowing and juicier than ever. It couldn't be better. I love you, Rebecca. Story 11. I left my girlfriend of about a year. Shortly thereafter, she got Australian Shepherd Puppy. I enjoy Norse mythology, which she knew, so she named the puppy Loki. We were still financially entangled, as I was a co-signer on the lease for her apartment. Because of that, when she asked me to come meet the puppy, I agreed. Cutest dog ever, and he super enjoyed playing with me. Turns out she was incredibly manipulative. After the play session was over, she casually let me know that all the other boys wanted to be Loki's dad. She also indicated that I had dibs on the honor, but that obviously I'd have to get back together with her. Well, she was insane, and I knew this. But I also knew that the close relationship was amazing. Her body was God's gift. And that puppy was really super cute, so I said what the hell. We got back together. The close relationship resumed being amazing. Her body got even better. The puppy got better as he got older. Fast forward nine months, we're done again. The following day, she calls the police spouting on about domestic violence, which never happened. The police arrive, handcuff me. After speaking very briefly with the police, they decide they believe me that the violence never happened. Release me. She leaves in a huff with her things and with Loki. I ask the police how I can protect myself in the future from further frivolous false claims. They tell me not to be alone with her. Check. That night, I'm at the bar watching some March Madness with a friend who the GF thought I was cheating with, which also never happened. When I get a call from the GF, she feels guilty about what went down, realized that during the past nine months, Loki and I really bonded and he became my dog. She wanted to give him to me. This makes me happy. He's a great dog and I missed him already. There was a catch. She'd already taken Loki to her mom's house, an hour or so away, and had had some drinks so she couldn't go retrieve him herself. Given that the police had just told me not to be alone with her, this raised all possible red flags. I said, hell no, the dog wasn't worth it. Fast forward a few hours of continued phone calls, and she eventually appeared at my apartment, where thankfully the friend had joined me after the game. After a few more rounds of, no, I'm not going anywhere alone with you, my friend chimes in that she'd be happy to drive us. So around 2.30 a.m., the three of us hop in her car and drive the most awkward hour and change ever to retrieve my dog, then the second most awkward hour and change ever to return home. It's been another six years, Loki is doing great, and all subsequent attempts to get back together have been emphatically answered, no. Story 12, told her maybe, but thought, fudge no you crazy bad person. I told her she'd have to prove to me she had changed, but I knew she wouldn't and also knew she didn't want me. What she wanted was the safety blanket I offered when things went south in her life and with the abusive unpleasant person she cheated on me with, and she proved me right about a month later, told me to go fudge off, she was back with a real man. I then told her I knew, 
My friends and I had been watching the close relationship videos he'd been posting on the internet that she didn't know about. Then I ended it with, looks like I'm still not missing much, story 13. He would do this cycle of talking and flirting and hanging out not so casually for a month, and then not talking to me for a month or two, and then starting up again by texting, hey, and building from there. I let him do it for a few rounds of that cycle because I really liked him. Then one time he texted me, hey, after a couple harsh months, and I replied, go fudge yourself with a rake. And that was that. Story 14. I dated this guy on and off since I was 14-ish. I finally left him for good in February. He tried many times to email me asking me to come back, saying he missed me, etc. At first I was a little weak and told him I can't anymore. Eventually I just started ignoring him completely. When he found a way around my email spam filter, I just deleted the messages. It's now October and I can't remember the last time I was this happy. He was controlling over everything from who I talked to, to what I'd wear. Well, now I can talk to whoever I want and wear my Lolita dresses without... But, but, Alizoyez, you'll have other men looking at you. You're mine, D. Story 15. My ex-wife had an affair for three years while we were married. When we were in line to close our bank accounts during the divorce proceedings, she turned to me and said, Can we just start over? I burst out laughing and didn't stop till we were done with the bank, and I got in my car and drove away. Story 16. My ex, whom I dated pretty much all through high school, cheated on me with my older brother and wanted to get back together with me after she realized how much of a he was. It was a few months after it happened, so I just responded with some deep laughter, followed by, You're flipping kidding me, right? I would rather take it up the peach from a rowdy horse than ever have you in my life again. I didn't realize it until years later, but I think the cheating was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because she was a cold, hard psycho and my bro got the brunt of it. My bro and I have since reconciled because I basically told him that if it wasn't for that messed up up thing he did, who knows where my life would have gone instead of me being married to the most wonderful Uzbekistan lady in the world. Story 17. She wanted to pay me to marry her, after two years of nearly zero contact, so she could get a green card. Before, she'd broken up with me after I'd traveled across the world to be with her. On day three of a month-long trip, I actually gave it some serious thought. I was completely broke at the time. When I said no, she couldn't believe it. She wound up getting a yes from a guy I knew and proceeded to talk a ton of cow about me to him. Next time I talked to her, it was because her mother had recently passed away. My father had passed away when I was 16, so I called to see if I could help her out emotionally. She answered the phone, breathless, and told me she was being messed up. I ended it there, haven't talked to her since. Story 18 X and I work the same city but live in towns about an hour apart. He called. I agreed to see him that weekend. Made big plans with him for cooking a romantic dinner and just talking about things. Told him to drop a key to his place off with the secretary at my office, and I'd meet him there the following Friday night since I got off at noon on Fridays, and he had to work until 5 o'clock. He dropped off the key. Friday came. I got two of the guys from work to go with me to his apartment and got all my stuff back he refused to give me after he broke up with me and kicked me out of the apartment we'd had together. Left the key behind, never heard from him again. Story 19. On the phone. She had just left me with the cat she had adopted, left me hanging with the rent, took off to Kelowna, and left all her stuff for me to pack up. This after, she had hit me in the face a few times while drunk, stole money from my bank account, and threw a going-away party in our house so she could give her girlfriends a bunch of her clothes. Please, I know I messed up up. I know I did wrong. I shouldn't have taken that money. Please, I'll come back. We'll fix up the apartment and I'll be better. I promise I'll never hit you again. Please, please, you've known me for a long time. Ten years. What makes you think that someone like me would be with someone as weak as you? Then I to the sky up. Story 20. When she told me she wanted a divorce and we were crying and blubbering and everything, she asked me, what if I'm making a mistake? What if this isn't what I want? I told her that I can't say how I'd feel in the future and she might have to live with her choice. About six months later, she said she might have made a mistake. I told her I was sorry and if she needed anything, she could count on me, but it wouldn't be as her husband or lover, just as someone who wants the best for her. I have no interest in hurting her as she made our divorce as painless as possible for me. I will not subject myself to seconds of it, though. I'm far happier now. Story 21. Our relationship ended after four and a half years because she cheated on me over Labor Day weekend at the college she went to, which was four hours away from my college. After a week of going back and forth arguing about it, I told her I just couldn't talk to her anymore because of what she did. She said she understood and I thought things would go well after that. Flash forward to Thanksgiving break. 
I am just getting back to my dorm after being home all break visiting my family when I get a text from her. She says she made a terrible mistake and didn't realize all the stuff I did for her until she didn't have me to do it anymore. She said she missed me and that she still loved me and that she even broke up with her current boyfriend, the one she cheated on me with, because she wanted to get back together with me. Looking back, I probably shouldn't have been so harsh, but things had not been going well for me, and I had a lot of anger and other emotions bottled up inside. I tore into her for a good hour on the phone about how if she loved me, she wouldn't have messed up that other guy, and that she might as well go back to him because she wouldn't ever be seeing me again. I kind of feel bad for being so mean, but she hurt me so much that I just had to let her know exactly how I felt and how it felt to be tossed to the side by the person you loved with your entire being. She got really quiet after I said that and just responded with, I understand and I'm sorry, I still love you and always will. Goodbye. And that was the last I have ever heard from her. So maybe I didn't handle it the best way. Opinions from the hive mind on my response to her.